time immemorial, alcoholic beverages have had a privileged position in Rwandan tradition, that is, in marriage rituals and other celebrations. Also, in recognition of an individual's outstanding act, Ronan said he deserved to be offered beer, which he would share with friends. Sharing beer with friends has had a powerful social impact of bringing people together and creating strong family ties. It has hence finally become unusual to see someone drinking alone. Ronan's normally drink in groups. In his book, Origin and History of Beer and Brewing, John Arnold relates the history of beer and the art of brewing, revealing that humans started drinking beer 5,000 years before the Christian era. Chemical tests of vessels used in brewing and drinking have revealed that the oldest ones are found in Iran. It is from this place that the practice of brewing and drinking spread to ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia before it reached the rest of the world. Any cereal containing natural sugars, once in contact with wild yeast in the air, can undergo fermentation, thus naturally producing alcohol without any human intervention. Indeed, the first alcohol to be consumed by humans was obtained naturally without any brewing activity. Biochemical research has shown that Iranians were producing alcohol 7,000 years ago. Indeed, this is where the oldest brewing and drinking pottery jars have been found. Also, a Sumerian tablet as old as 6,000 years has been discovered, depicting people drinking a beverage through reed straws from a communal bar. A 4,000-year-old poem has been found in which Sumerians were honoring Nankasi, the goddess of brewing. From this poem, it is clear that the alcohol was obtained from wheat bread. In China, brewing pots as old as 5,400 years have been discovered, revealing that here, barley and other cereals were used. With the Industrial Revolution, which indeed hinged upon the invention of the steam engine in 1765, brewing also turned from artisanal to industrial production. It is also around this time that the thermometer and the hydrometer were developed, and these two revolutionized brewing since it allowed the brewer more control over the process and greater knowledge of the results, thus achieving the highest standards of uniformity and purity in the beer. As stated by William Harrison in his book, Description of England in 1577, up to the 18th century, there was still a problem of preparing good quality brewing malt. Subsequently, the beer produced then had the disturbing aftertaste of smoke from firewood and charcoal. However, this was progressively rectified through technological advancement with high accuracy machines as well as modern brewing techniques. Traditional brewing craft versus modern brewing skills. Runners also have their own traditional way of brewing. Once the cereal to be used has been selected, the grain is soaked in abundant water and later removed to allow it to germinate. The half-germinated sorghum is generously sprinkled with ash from dried banana leaves and left to turn in sorghum malt. Dry sorghum malt is then milled to give flour, which will be mixed with water to give a thick concentrate. This will be slowly diluted with more water and then yeast is added. The malted sorghum mixture is then left in a warm, well-covered area overnight to ferment until the beer is ready to be extracted. This process is not really different from the modern brewing process. The only difference lies in the clearness of modern brewing that involves filtration as well as in the accuracy observed, whereby each drop of the beer has to be thoroughly analyzed and controlled to ensure the safety of the consumers. In this video, we shall relate the whole process of beer production starting from the cereals used up to the point of getting a bottled beer to be commercialized. To get a clearer picture of this process, let's first see how modern brewing was introduced in Rwanda. Rwanda's brewing industry, historical background. Very few industries existed in Rwanda before Blariwa, which is up to now the country's largest brewery. The construction work started in November 1957, and in 1959, Blarirwa started its operations with the production of the first Primus bottle. 
This brewery was the first industry to engage in the national stock exchange market. It contributed in curbing the unemployment plight and stands as one of the very few industries in Rwanda that enjoy regional and international recognition in producing alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Blarirwa is the pioneer brewery in Rwanda. It was officially inaugurated by King Mutara III, Rudahigwa. It is in 1959 that a brewery started operating in Rwanda. This is when Primus was put on the Rwandan market. Primus was the very first alcoholic beverage to be produced in Rwanda in a modern way that was different from the traditional brewing where sorghum was processed to produce Ichigaije. It is in 1987 that another beer brand was produced in Rwanda, Mutsik. This one was later to be followed by Legend, Amstel, Tabo King, Primus Citron and Amstel Malt. Rarirwa started producing soft drinks in 1974 and these currently include Coca-Cola and sodas like Orange, Citron, Fiesta, Sprite, Tonic, Stony and Vitalo. The history of industrial brewing in Rwanda is synonymous with the history of Blarirwa itself. You love beer? I love beer too. However, Few of us know exactly how this brew is processed until the beer reaches the consumers. To get this information, we went to the shores of Lake Kivu, where Blariwa Brewery is located. It is in Nyamyumba sector in Rubavu district. Raw ingredients of brewing. We followed the beer processing event up to the bottling point. The steps involved are selection of the raw materials to be used or grain bill, steeping, fermentation, conditioning, packaging and commercialization. First of all, what are the ingredients in a beer? What items are required to obtain a beer? All these are found at Blurry Royal Brewery. Four principal elements are required. Water, barley malt, hops and a brewer's yeast. Water. Finished beer is over 90% water. But the water used in beer processing is not just any water. It is water purified to rigidly set standards and must have the proper calcium and magnesium content for maximum beer flavor. Malt. Beer processing requires also malt. Malt is raw barley, wheat, oats or rye that has been germinated in a malt house. To make malt, grain is first allowed to germinate this germination process creates enzymes that convert the grain starch into a sugar called maltose. This sugar is essential for the fermentation process since it is the one upon which yeast will act to produce alcohol. The steeping process is followed by germination. The germinated grain is then kiln roasted, a process that reduces starch into simpler sugars and depending on how long the roasting process takes, the malt will darken in color. This is what will influence the color and the flavor of the beer. The longer the roasting process, the darker the beer. Hops Hops are plants whose flowers play an essential role in brewing. The inside of these flowers is endowed with sticky yellow globulets called lupulins. The hop rains contribute flavor, aroma and a particular bitterness to the brew and highly improve the shelf life of the beer as well as the creaminess of its form. Hops are not widely grown on the globe. Beer flavor and bitterness are therefore obtained using other plant extracts. Just in the same way, Vanonia amygdalina or Omobirizi was traditionally used in Rwanda to clean the inner linings of pottery jars destined for brewing. The Brewer's Yeast Yeast breaks down the sugar in the marsh to alcohol and carbon dioxide during fermentation. When all these items are ready, then the beer processing journey starts. The journey has eight steps. Milling the grain, mash conversion, rotaring, boiling, hot separation and cooling, fermentation, maturation and filtration, carbonation and cellaring. We are going to see all these steps here at Bradlewa Brewery. The step-by-step -step process of brewing beer. Milling the grain. 
The first thing a brewer needs to do before getting to work making beer is to ensure that the brewing grain is ready, milled or crushed. This step is crucial since it can make or break a beer even before it has even begun. The key point here is to have the grains crushed enough so that the starchy center of the barley seed is fully exposed without damaging the grain hulls that encase the grains. If the crush is too coarse, not enough of the starch will be converted to fermentable sugars. But again, if the crush is too fine, the husks which act as a filter bed for the brew will be destroyed and the brew will be gummy and unusable. Mash conversion. Once the grain has been milled, it is sent to a large vessel called mash tun where it is mixed with hot water to form the mash. The heat from the water activates the enzymes within the barley and these enzymes start converting the starches in the grains into simple sugars. There are several different types of enzymes in barley, each with a preferred temperature at which it works. By raising and lowering the temperature of the mash, therefore, brewers can control what types of sugars are produced by the enzymes. At lower temperatures, highly fermentable sugars are produced, resulting in dry beers. At higher temperatures, the sugars are not so easily digested by the yeast, resulting in a beer with some sugars left unfermented and thus a sweeter, more fully bodied end product. The enzymes work very fast. Within an hour's time, they will have finished converting the starch into simple sugars. At this point, the brewer will stop the activity of the enzymes by raising the temperature of the mash to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 93 degrees Celsius, a process known as mashing out. Lottering. At the lottering stage, the mash is pumped into the lotter tun, where a sweet liquid known as wort is separated from the grain husks. The boil. The boil involves collection of the wort into a vessel called a kettle, where it is brought to a controlled boil before the hops are added. Wort separation and cooling. During this stage, any malt or hop particles are removed to leave a liquid that is ready to be cooled and fermented. Fermentation To start fermentation, yeast is added to the wort and the yeast converts the sugary liquid into beer by producing alcohol, a wide range of flavors and carbon dioxide. This gas is later used to give beer its sparkle. Maturation after fermentation, the young grain beer needs to be matured in order to allow both a full development of the flavors and a smooth finish. Filtration, carbonation and cellaring. After reaching its full potential, the beer is filtered, carbonated and transferred to the bright beer tank where it goes through a cellaring process which takes three to four weeks to complete. Once completed, the beer is ready to be packaged for commercialization and consumption. Packaging is the process of putting the finished beer into vessels for mass consumption. Typically, beer is packaged in bottles, cans and kegs. With modern technology, the whole process involving lottering, boiling, filtration, cooling, fermentation, filtration, carbonation and cellaring as well as the washing of all of these huge tanks is fully computerized. The probability of seeing fresh beer in a bottle that is dirty or that has any other physical defect is 0%. In other words, it is impossible. The crates with empty bottles arrive at the unpacking machine from where they are transported to the case washer. The unpacked bottles proceed to a machine known as bottle washer that uses pressurized clean hot water. This is to ensure that the bottles are fully cleaned of impurities and cleared of old labels. To verify that the bottles were well washed, they are checked by another machine known as an empty bottle inspector, EBI. This one uses a photosensitive sensor to distinguish good bottles from bad ones by rejecting the bad bottles. This sensor also identifies the bottle set for the production. For instance, if the bottle line has been set for Primus bottles, any bottle other than Primus will be rejected. The inspected bottles are then sent to the filter machine ready to be filled with beer. This machine is also endowed with a section 
that crowns the bottles once filled, after which they are labelled. After that, the bottles pass through another checkpoint known as the Full Bottle Inspector FBI. This one verifies that the bottles are neither underfilled or overfilled. After all this, the beer crates are uploaded in two trucks that transport them to different parts of the country for consumption. Beer brewing tests, analysis and quality control. Beer is a beverage whose quality needs to be thoroughly controlled to ensure there are no health hazards to the consumers. Barilwa Brewery allowed us to monitor their beer brewing test, analysis and quality control. These tests are indeed carried out on each and every beer ingredient and not solely on the end product. Most tests are carried out in laboratories and these include the actual degustation destined for controlling the taste and flavor of the beer. Quality control in Bradley Brewery is carried out in the most detailed manner, from the water used for brewing up to the beer ready for consumption. All the items used for manufacturing the beer are analyzed or controlled as well as the degree of fermentation, color control and analysis of the beer density which also determines its quality. Brariro Brewery, Workplace Safety, Visit, Observation At each stage of beer production in Brariro Brewery, worker safety in all its aspects is of prime importance. All instructions related to safety are respected accordingly. Myself, I had to change my clothes and buy a pair of trousers since the shorts I had on are not allowed in this area. It's not just a change of clothes. There is also a code of conduct to be followed once you have entered the brewery. This is displayed in an audiovisual presentation explaining thoroughly the path to follow when walking in the brewery and the general conduct to adopt when you are inside the factory. To verify your level of comprehension, the visitor is given a test. If you fail, you are asked to redo the test. With safety in the brewery, there is no joking. You are given a safety gear and carefully searched before and after touring the brewery. By seeing the orderly disposal of each item at its conventional location, also indicated by means of pictures, plus the roaring rotating machines in several rooms, you come to realize the importance of the special safety measures taken in favor of the guests and the workers. With all the results, from the preliminary laboratory tests to degustation, through analysis of the sugars in the cereals used for brewing, the beer head, the color, the taste and flavor, now Parirwa's beer bottle can be allowed to come out for consumption. It is a laborious biochemical process that requires attention in terms of safety and quality control at each step of the production line. For over half a century that Barirwa Brewery has been operating in Rwanda, it has increased the number of its products and updated its brewing machinery accordingly. And thanks to this endeavor, Barirwa has won several awards at the regional, continental and international level. Mm -hmm.